What up folks, it's Alex here. Right, today we're gonna to talk about DaVinci Resolve. Now this video is gonna be really quick and really to the point, because I'm gonna give myself five minutes to cover all five top tips. No messing around, let's crack on. As soon as you're in Resolve, the first thing you wanna do is, is make sure that your timeline settings are correct. So before you import anything, any media files, any videos, any pictures, any music, make sure that you've set your timeline settings. Now to do that, you need to click on the cog in the bottom right and you'll be taken to the project settings screen. Now the first thing you want to change is the timeline resolution. You need to set this to whatever you filmed at. So 1080p, 2.7K, 4K, whatever it may be, change your timeline resolution to suit the footage. The next most important thing is this, your timeline frame rate. Again, you should change this to be the same as the footage that you shot. So if you shot your footage at 24 frames per second, set it to 24, 30, 60, etc. Now it's really important that you get into a habit of doing this straight away. This is the first thing you should do as soon as you open Resolve for every time you make a new project. Because as soon as you import anything, you can no longer change these settings. So get into a habit of clicking the cog and making these changes. Most importantly, the frame rate. Tip number two, slow motion. So if you've shot some video at a higher frame rate than your timeline, for example, I've set my timeline to 24 frames per second, but this video clip here is actually at 59.94 FPS or 60 frames per second. If I add this to the timeline, it will play just fine, but it's not playing at 60 FPS, it's playing at 24 FPS. Now because this footage is at 60 frames per second, I can actually elongate the frame, thus slowing it down to make it fit 24, so I can essentially play this footage back at 24 frames per second. To do this, right click on the video file, on the timeline, and click change clip speed. Now you need to do a little bit of maths here, so I know that if I divide 60 by 24, I get 2.5. Now as a percentage, I know that is 40%. So I can change my clip to 40% and hit change. Now you'll notice the clip is now longer. And if I play it back, the clip is in silky smooth slow motion. So you've all seen it, the black bars at the top and bottom of the video, which instantly makes it look more cinematic. Now there's a really easy way to do that in Resolve without having to do it on individual clips. All you need to do is in the top toolbar, click on timeline, and then near the bottom is output blanking. Now there's loads of options. The most popular one is 2.39. Give that a click and you'll instantly add black bars to the video to give it that cinematic look. Now this will apply to the whole video from start to finish. That's a really easy way to add the letterbox into your video to give it that cinematic appeal. LUTs, which stands for Look Up Tables. Now, LUTs are basically filters for your video. Think of an Instagram filter. They make your, your video look a little bit of a different colour or they bring out the highlights or the shadows and they add different tones and feels to your video. Now, one thing to bear in mind is no one LUT will be perfect for every single one of your videos. Each clip, depending on the conditions and the, the white balance and the lighting and the weather and all those things, will probably need a different look. So how much time you want to spend on them is up to you, but they can have a massive effect on the, the tone and the feel of your video. Easiest way to find them is on Google. There's loads of free and paid for looks out there that which you can just import into DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you click on the cog again, bottom right, and this time click on color management. And in this lookup table, you're looking for the 3D input lookup table, and there's a drop down. Now, there's a bunch of pre installed LUTs which have come with DaVinci Resolve. If you need to import any, you click on open the LUT table at the bottom, and it'll open up a directory which is the C drive, program data, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve support, LUTs. Any that you get, you, can, you just need to copy to this location, and they will appear within DaVinci Resolve. To apply one, go to your 3D input lookup table and then select one of the LUTs from your list. Click save and that will have an effect on the video. So you can see if I play this video, 
it instantly has a different look because the LUT has been applied and it's changed the color and the, the styling of the video. If you're not happy with it at any time, you can go back and remove it or try a different one. So you've edited your video, you've chopped everything together, and now you're ready to export. Now I'm gonna assume that you're exporting to YouTube because that's the most common video site these days. Now, there is an option to select YouTube, but I personally don't like it. I prefer to use the custom. In the description, you'll see a link to this website here, which is the recommended upload encoding settings for your video. So we need MP4 with a video codec of H.264. So change the format to MP4 and the codec to H.264, which is already there. Now, resolution and frame rate should be the same as what you set your timeline. So if you set your timeline at, at 1080p and 60, you need to change the frame rate to be 60. If it was 24, leave it at 24, etc. Underneath there, you've got quality. Now, by default, we'll go to automatic best. Now, that will give you the best quality, but the bit rate is realistically more than you need for YouTube. It'd be wasted once you actually upload it to YouTube and you'll just end up with a massive file. And then in these recommended settings is bit rate. Now you can use this table to identify the recommended video bitrate for uploading to YouTube. My video is at 1080p and at 24 frames per second, which is eight megabits per second. So if I head back to Resolve, in this quality, I can restrict it to 8,000 kilobytes per second, which is eight megabits per second. Lastly, if you click on this file button, you can give it a name, enter the custom name, hit add to render queue, select the location, and then you're ready to start rendering your video. Hopefully that was useful for you. Please do let me know in the comment section below either way. Like and subscribe if you like the content and I'll see you next time.